at the headquarters of the KLM for a meeting with our friend Vincent Knopes, who is always very generous with giving us tickets to bring American speakers to the Netherlands for the John Adams Institute. Looking forward to seeing him again and uh, uh, hoping that KLM is continuing their collaboration with the John Adams. Good news just came from our meeting with uh, our uh, with a delegate to the board of the KLM, Vincent Knopes, who's been our contact person for sponsoring at the John Adams for many years. And he told us that the KLM uh, loves what we do and is happy to sponsor us with some tickets for another year. So good news for today. Het Amsterdamse kunstaanbod is van een gigantische omvang. Wat gebeurt er toch veel in Amsterdam? En wat een luxe om in een stad te leven waar zoveel diverse, hoogwaardige kunst wordt gecreëerd. I just came back from Singapore where I saw a number of examples of buildings with green facades. We already know the green roof and we know the little gardens in front of people's houses, the Gebeltuinen in Dutch. But there's a new trend which is uh, conquering the world, the green facades, the green walls. And this Sport Plaza Mercator is one of the first buildings in the Netherlands to have one of these green walls. I talked to the architect Ton Venhoeve about it and he said one of the reasons to do this originally was that the uh, people in this neighborhood were not enthusiastic about having a new building here. 
they already had a pool and a place where you could lie outside and they didn't really want a new building. So he said that by giving the building a green skin, that made it softer and would make it more attractive for uh, people to go along with the idea. He built the Sport Plaza Mercator starting in 2001, and it's been part of the cityscape here in Amsterdam since 2005. And I must say, I was curious to see how it was doing because one of the issues with these green buildings is how much uh, maintenance do they need. In the first year, this building did indeed have a, a, an extra budget for maintenance. But I must say, even in this Dutch climate, which is very different from the tropical climate in Singapore, where everything grows, this building is doing really well. And I think it's been embraced by the neighborhood and it probably wouldn't even need this green camouflage now anymore. Oscar Fos, congratulations on the uh, commission for the Singer Mutes, the Singer Laren. Yes. I'm not supposed to say Singer Museum anymore. It's more than that. It's more than that. Um, this was an important commission for you as a young firm called Kraft. K-R-F-T. Yes. Okay. Correct. Uh, for the Singer in Laren, which I used to know as a museum and a theater complex. What was your commission here? What did you do? Well, actually, the, the, the question was how can we create one institute for the arts, actually. So uh, we, we tried to create a space which combined, which connected the, the, the theater, theater arts, what is all, mm -hmm. the musical arts, and uh, the, the sculptural arts. The public square means that the museum is also accessible uh, in all sorts of ways without having to buy a ticket. Exactly. So, so it makes it more a public place and not just a closed arts place. Exactly. So you yeah. can you can enter the, the, the institute until far until you, you reach the, the border of uh, buying a ticket. How was your uh, design received by the public? Well, in the end very good, but of course in this kind of small towns everybody was very uh, like focused on what's going to happen here. everybody had an opinion I'm sure everybody had an opinion <laughs> but I we saw that as a positive thing so actually the director of the museum was officially your client but you had a lot of clients yeah that's really how it worked Oscar Vos of Kraft KRFT yes congratulations on this uh, important new commission thank you very much I'm on my way with the uh, Amsterdam Architecture Academy to the Marker Vodde, a series of man-made islands in the body of water called the Marker Meer, the Marker Lake. The Marker Meer is uh, a body of water that has been closed off from the natural system by a, a small dike, and the quality of water has really deteriorated. So the idea uh, of Natuurmonumenten, nature monuments, is to improve the quality of nature by building these islands in the Markermeer. They've been, uh, they're still in the process of being constructed. I think we're actually going to have to wear a helmet on these islands since it's still officially a construction site, <laughs> which tells us a lot about what Dutch nature really is, namely a man-made construct. on the newest bit of new land that is being created here in the Netherlands. And this was an idea of yours, mm -hmm. Roel Posthorn. Yes. You work for Natuurmonumenten, a uh, nature NGO in the Netherlands. What's going on here behind us? Well, we're right in the middle of uh, the Markermeer, which is one of the biggest lakes of, uh, of Western Europe. And it's adjacent to Amsterdam. But it's a lake in a very poor state, so very poor water quality. It's going not well with fish stock and bird life. Mm -hmm. And Marco Warden is, well, quite a large scale intervention to, to make these things better. Better water quality and also better bird life and, uh, and fish stock. One of the reasons I think this is such an interesting project rule is that so much of Dutch water management through the years has been driven by safety considerations. Yes. And now we're doing a huge project like this. The first phase alone, five islands, 78 million euros, is all directed towards quality and ecology. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it's, and I think it's, well, in general, in, in the Netherlands, we're quite proud on our water management. 
but um, well having a lake like this in such a poor state in the central part of our country uh, and not doing anything about it so that's I think it doesn't we should be ashamed of that yeah a little bit one of the biologists who are accompanying us on this excursion to the Markervada told us that there are now 35,000 uh, swallows living here on the coast. It's amazing, it's a kind of mega landscape in mini format, or as one of the students on the excursion said, it's a little bit like Petra in, uh, in Jordan. But why even let people on if your ideal is to promote the ecology? Maybe it's better for the birds if people stay away. Yeah, but it's also very good for the birds if people love birds. So <laughs> it helps them being protected. And will it be open to the public when it's finished? Yes, already quite soon, because we hope to be open maybe September next year already. Mm -hmm. There's a really man-made component to this new yes, nature. Yes, the big first step is heavy machinery and uh, <laughs> dredges, etc. We, we work very quickly, so this whole complex is realized within two years, and then all the machines, they, they will be away. Well, I can't wait to come back when it opens to the public and to see what this new example of typical Dutch man-made nature looks like. You're most welcome. Thank you, Rule okay. Polstorn. Okay. <laughs>